Welcome to a Mukuru Moment user example. Today's user example is from the Sustainable Heritage Network. In the Sustainable Heritage Network, they use communities and cultural protocols to manage sharing permissions for digital heritage items and resources in the SHN. Because I'm not logged into the SHN, I can browse all of the tutorials that are open access and public listing. If I go to the Communities tab, I can browse by a single community's public resources, like the Center for Digital Archaeology. Let's log in to learn more. Now that I'm logged in, I can click on my name in the top right hand corner to view my public profile. As you can see, I'm a member of the Center for Digital Archaeology community, and I have access to the cultural protocol Center for Digital Archaeology community only. Because the Center for Digital Archaeology is an open community, we've created a cultural protocol for when that community wants to share within the community only. <laughs> That's why the Cultural Protocol Center for Digital Archaeology Community Only is created. Let's see how this works on a digital heritage item or a resource in the SHN. I'm going to click in the top bar to add a digital heritage item. There's some required fields that I fill out, like the title. Let's call this Testing Cultural Protocols Community Only. So if I want to share this digital heritage item, within my community only, I would use that cultural protocol. On the right hand side, I can select my community and then I will select the cultural protocol Center for Digital Archaeology Community Only. And then I can add a category about this. In the Sustainable Heritage Network, they use their categories according to what type of digital heritage item this is. Is it about curriculum development? Is it about language documentation, people, photographs, or images? Today's category is FAQ. And I'm gonna save the changes now. So I've created a digital heritage item for testing cultural protocols and listed it as community only. Let's make one that's public access. We'll name this Testing Cultural Protocols Public. So I can still give it the Center for Digital Archaeology community, and I'll make the Cultural Protocol Public Access, and give it the required category it needs. Now I can save. Awesome! Let's go back to the Center for Digital Arche Archaeology community to see the resources that I can view as a logged in member of the community. Here I am at the community page. I can see the two digital heritage items or SHN resources that I've just created. The test for community only and the test for the public. Now, any member of the C Center for Digital Archaeology who is logged into the site can see the community only cultural protocol item. But if I log out, we will see that the item will have disappeared. So here I am, I'm logged out, and I'm going to go back to the communities page. When I click on the Center for Digital Archaeology, we can only see the public item. That's how you know the cultural protocol is working for you. Let's review. The way that the Sustainable Heritage Network uses communities and cultural protocols is that a community is always under open sharing. So the community will always be a public listing. The cultural protocols are used on digital heritage items. So you can share those items with those groups or individuals whom you think should see those items. So every community has the public cultural protocol, 
which when put on a digital heritage item means that the item will be shared with the public. A protocol called restricted access registered users, which means that this item will be open to all registered users of the Sustainable Heritage Network. And they have a community only cultural protocol, which means when that protocol is put on an item, that item will only be shared within that specific community. Thank you for listening to a Mukuru moment about the Sustainable Heritage Network and how they use their communities and cultural protocols. See you soon. Mm-hmm.